<laughs> Today on Give Me Shelter. Brian's foster dog is feral and scared of humans. After a trip to the vet and some training, will she be suitable for adoption? She get more curious or less curious? Brian? An emaciated dog is rescued from inside a chicken coop and taken to pet helpers. But will her poor health prevent her from finding a forever home? She might have some kind of, you know, who knows, I mean, some kind of illness or disease. much man try and catch this heathen if you hadn't realized it has been a year since we I know, dude. caught her man that's kind of crazy what, like so, thanksgiving or something it was the day after thanksgiving last year melody is a feral dog from Solagree. there's been feral dogs out there for many many years probably over 20 years jason and i've been working out there with the dogs for you know the last four years we've rescued probably over 300 dogs in that amount of time. Last summer, we had rescued 17 puppies all at one time. We found out shortly after we got the 17 puppies that there were three puppies that we did not get. We went out, grabbed one of them, couldn't find the last two. And then months later, we go out there and we see these two adolescent dogs walking around and realize that those are the two dogs that we, that we missed. Jason and I decided that we we're gonna try to catch these dogs. So. We set dog traps in 30 minutes. We caught the two dogs. The boy quickly turned around, got adopted out really quickly. The girl, she was very skittish. She did not want to have anything to do with humans. Put her into foster care, didn't work out in foster care. So this summer, she moved in with me. I've taught her to sit. I've taught her to do a couple tricks, but that only happens with me. So uh, when strangers come over, she reverts right back, just wants to pace around and stay as far away from people as possible. There are eight feral adults living on Solagree, and most of them are too difficult to catch. While residents and volunteers leave food for the dogs and let them roam freely, Jason and Brian are building sheds in a fenced-in area. This will allow them to finally trap, spay, or neuter the remaining dogs and prevent more litters from being born, while also securing a safe place for the adult dogs to live. Got a trainer actually coming over this afternoon to to work with her a little bit and give me some pointers. Who's coming? A uh, van, you know that? Oh yeah, yeah, stuff? yeah, yeah, awesome man, he's a good guy. Yeah, so. Good guy. If we can get some training into Melody, then it could be a really big deal. It would make her highly adoptable and it would also prove to us that, that there's more hope for adult ferals because sometimes they snap out of it and sometimes they never do. We'll, uh, we'll get her in her crate and we'll get her on. You brought the van? Yeah, yeah, I got okay. a van. Uh, unless right. you want to put her on the motorcycle, I don't yeah. think that's going to work. Yeah. All right, uh, I guess I'll step back so she actually follows you in. Melody is due for her annual exam at Pet Helpers, but transporting her to the shelter will be a challenge on its own. Your room. Good girl. Okay, I'm going to keep this on here yeah, like a cover. I'll back out. It's okay, sunshine, don't worry. You think it's fairly easy just to take a dog into the shelter and get it shots. With Melody, it's not that easy. I cannot put her on a leash. I can't just walk her out in the car and put her in the car. When we first caught her and we did intake on her, it just really put her in kind of a panic mode. That's what I do not want to have happen today. She's just come so far and gained so much trust in me that I don't want to backtrack any. An emaciated and neglected dog has just been rescued by Pet Helpers volunteers and brought to the shelter. Beyond her weight, it is unclear if she has any other medical or behavioral issues. 
She's so pretty. I think that she's probably an I, I like Irish setter mix or something like that with the long red fur because not many dogs have that. Grab a weight on her real quick. Okay. She was actually brought in by a couple who we know. The woman is a groomer and has groomed some of our dogs in the past. They were at uh, a relative's house and the relative pointed out these dogs that were being neglected down the road and so they went to check it out. She was in a tiny little chicken coop and so they pleaded with the owner to let them take her and the owner said sure for $20. She looks like she's in pretty bad condition. You can count every rib, you can see her hip bones, you can count her vertebra. Really high possibility that at least in the next month, if not the next week, that she would have passed away. So how much does she weigh? 28.4. So she should probably weigh probably 40 pounds or more. There aren't that many good, decent people that can look at their own pet dog and watch them get that skinny and not do anything about it. So the fact that uh, that was somebody's actual pet it was definitely an abuse case, definitely a neglect case. They said, so what's this one's name? And they said, Buddy. And they were like, but this one's a female. Oh, Buddy's the male. That must be Wrinkles. And then they asked her, why did you name her Wrinkles? And they're like, well, look at her side. Look at all of her wrinkles. And they're like, those are her ribs. Oh, my gosh. How you could possibly think those were wrinkles and not ribs, I, I will never know. This dog was literally starving to death, and this is why you named her Wrinkles, because you have starved her. You can name her November. No. Lassie. Lass. Yeah, maybe something like Clover. That's it. Clover. It's Clover. All right, hopefully she hadn't freaked out yet. Hey girl, look at me with this place. Melody's kind of a, a sensitive case. You know, she's one of the one of the souls that didn't really uh, switch it from feral to domesticated very well. She's really uh, taken a, a liking to Brian, but it's really important for us to get her out of Brian's foster and into a home. You know, he's been, he's been really working hard with her. She needs to move on. She needs to get into a forever home. Because of the severity of Melody's fear of humans, Dr. McKim will have to sedate her to administer the vaccines. Let's see. Hi, sweetie. Whoa, okay, let's see what happens. All righty, we'll keep her quiet. Hopefully this will work and, you know, she'll, she'll settle down so that we, you know, can get all the stuff done to her. probably never seen this before but if you want to look under her ears she's got all this like grease and excess earwax that's like dripping into her yeah, fur I saw that. yeah so the, if any of the dark black it looks like coffee grounds yeah. comes back we'll give her a revolution for ear mites oh that's ear mites if if it comes back it might have just been dirt that I cleaned out it's really hard to tell without the vets microscope and everything ear mites can be painful and require extensive treatment which could deter someone from adopting clover I tried to offer her a treat and she didn't want it. It's weird. It's like she doesn't know certain things are food. I don't yeah. quite know what's going on with that because I gave her a kibble with wet food and she ate it. And the people said that they tried to give her turkey yeah. and she wouldn't eat it. Hmm. So the fact that she ate the kibble with the wet food, maybe she just doesn't know. That that's treat. Yeah, what other stuff is yes. like. She might have some kind of, you know, who knows, I mean, some kind of illness or disease. She was kept outside, then chances, you know, there's like, there's a really high possibility she's going to be heartworm positive. If Clover tests positive for heartworms, not only will she need medical treatment, her activity level will also need to be greatly restricted. Ready? Go. One, two, three. Melody has just been given a sedative to calm her nerves before she receives her annual vaccines. Yeah. No, 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 it's okay, girl, it's okay. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. Oh, 
know that TV let us have that leg. Although she is sedated, Melody is still frightened of humans and could react out of fear. So Dr. McKim must administer the vaccines quickly and safely. Yay, look at that. All righty. Bingo. Oh, we were so good. She did seem a little nervous, but she didn't panic at all. We were able to get all of her shots, and that was the thing that kind of worried me the most. Gonna get Melody back home, get her back settled in the house. I've got a dog trainer coming over later today to kind of help me kind of go to the next step with her and see what we can do to get her over her, her fear of strangers. If the training session works out with Melody, this could all be positive. Steps, steps, steps in the right direction. Ed and Nicole are patiently waiting for the heartworm test result. If it's positive, this could cause Clover's adoption chances to decrease tremendously. Definitely trying to keep my hopes up that she's going to be negative. It's a pretty high percentage that she's going to have them, but you know, just keeping my fingers crossed. She's positive. She is? Yeah. But yeah, she's. She's, yes. Having heartworms will require Clover to be on a routine medical treatment, and her activity level will be extremely limited. Ah, oh, well that sucks. <laughs> I was really hoping that by some miracle she was negative. That's a lot for one animal to handle, and the fact that we just keep kind of stacking problems on top of each other. It not only makes it hard for her, but it's going to make her harder to really push onto an adopter where, you know, this, this is this great dog, but she has this wrong. Oh, and she has this wrong. Oh, and two more things. You know, it's, it's just at, at some point, adopters usually stop listening and move on to the next animal. Man, that sucks. Nicole is still unsure about what is causing Clover's ears to look so dirty and is worried it could be ear mites. She's having a lot of excess um, like grease and earwax coming out of her ears, like underneath her ears. It's like completely soaked. The, the couple who brought her in, they said that they flushed her ears. Did they? So, that might have been so there might be some residual stuff. I, going I know they on said there. they gave her a bath, so I was wondering if maybe they used. Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they said they did an ear flush also. Yeah, they Suddenly, there's a commotion on the adoption floor, as a few of the cats have escaped from their rooms. I think she's supposed to be in room two. Okay, you yeah, you can put her back where she was. And then we'll just try not to let the kitties out. So it's the day after Thanksgiving, and we thought for sure it would be quiet. We figured people would be traveling with families, whatever. But for some reason, everyone in, in the world is here. And unfortunately, some of our visitors have left uh, let some cats out of the cat room. Is this like cat escape day? Come on, Bing Bing. Oh, Bing Bing, where do you think you're going? Where did she come out of? Was it three? So I'm having to wrangle, the staff is having to wrangle cats, and my office happens to be in the cat area, so some of them end up in my office, and it's just another crazy day of pet helpers. Van has just arrived at Brian's house to give him a few pointers on how to domesticate Melody and alleviate her fear of humans. Hey, hey how, how are you? Going? Brian, I'm Van. Hi, Brian Foster, come on in. I'm hoping that Van can help me out. I've been working with her for a long time, and while she has come a long way with me, she still acts the same way when strangers come over. So if you're afraid of me, Approach me, okay? I want you to approach me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn away from you and just walk slightly away. I'm not going to make direct eye contact with you because the last thing you want me to do is if you're, if you're afraid of me is to try and hug you mm -hmm. or interact with you. Hey, Brian, how's it going? That seems friendly to me, mm -hmm. but to a frightened dog or a frightened animal or a frightened human, 
That's really threatening. The only thing you should be thinking at any moment when you're working with her is what can I do to make Melody the most comfortable? Mm -hmm. And right now for her, the most, the most comforting thing we can do is to take all possible pressure off of her. So you want to see if you can get her I'll to see if I can get come her out? Get out here. Okay. Okay. She's on guard. She's not wanting to go outside because people are outside. So the only way I could think of to get her outside was to let the rest of the dogs outside because she learns so much from the other dogs and gets a little bit of courage from being around other dogs. Clypey, sit. Sit. Um, maybe we could put those dogs on leashes. So I asked Brian to put Peanut on leash so that we could keep her from interacting with me unless I wanted her to. But she was there to provide a signal and a set of cues to Melody that I'm okay and that Melody's okay. So it's important for Melody that she have another dog present when she encounters a human because it's such an intense situation that she feels the absence of her pack just the way we would feel if we were out in the woods and you thought somebody was after us and I left you, it would multiply your fear incredibly and so it does the same thing for her. The goal is for her to be adopted to another family, but if she can't learn to accept strangers, then the potential for her to be adopted is very low. And so what we need to do is help Brian understand the methods and the steps to follow when strangers come over. Let's say that I had a $100 bill in my hand or a $50 bill, but the rule is you can take the $50 bill if you let me punch you in the face. You should feel happy if somebody presents you with a $50 bill. And instead, what's gonna happen is that I show you a $50 bill, your heart's gonna start to race mm -hmm. because I've created an aversive. You know, that's an interesting perspective because she is so fearful. We don't want her to have a negative association with, with people or treats. Put the $50 bill down, and instead of punching you in the face, I turn and walk off and go, that $50 is all yours. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you're gonna do with her is treat and retreat. She's gonna see you give her food, but you're not gonna be present, you're not gonna face her, you're not gonna expect anything from her. I'm also gonna feed this dog so she can see that I'm feeding that dog. Did she go eat the treat? She's smelling for him. She's smelling for him, good. I'm gonna see whether or not she'll even be curious. Humans are upright and dogs are on all fours. So the fact that we are so much taller than dogs makes us way more threatening than we want to be in a situation where we're dealing with a frightened dog. She get more curious or less curious? Brian? Van is testing a theory to see if it will reduce Melody's fear of humans by lying down in the hope that she will no longer see him as a threat. She get more curious or less curious? Brian? She's getting more curious. More, more curious. This is the least threatening I can be. And then I'm just gonna get up from where I am right now, but I'm gonna leave some treats behind and leave this spot. And tell me if she goes to get the treats. Yep. Yep. And it's happening quick, more, more and more quickly. Each time I left a treat, it took her subsequently less time to cross that boundary. So that the third time I left the treat, it took her a third as long to go get it as it did the first time I dropped it. If I'm moving to touch her, I'm not gonna look at her. I'm gonna do this. Come here, Peanut. I'm gonna to continue to turn away. There we go. Now again, she was checking me out, and so I removed as much pressure as I could. It was really gratifying to know that in just a few minutes, I could get Melody to relax, lying down, leaving treats, and I never made direct eye contact with her. I always used my peripheral vision. All right, let's call it a day for now and okay. let her get back with her pack. 
I feel extremely confident that Brian's going to be able to take the information I've given him uh, and transmit that information to his friends when they come over so that she understands that humans are not a threat. I'm very glad that Van came out today. You know, he's a volunteer at Pet Helpers just like I am. The fact that he's donating his time and his talent to, to help me out and to help Melody out and to you know help animals out, I'm very thankful for him to come out here and do that. This last little tip is going to help her get that extra confidence that she needs so that she can go to a permanent home and you know become that family pet that somebody wants. Clover spent the past three years of her life caged inside a chicken coop, so Nicole has decided to foster her for a few days, where she can finally sleep in a warm bed and be nursed back to health. Come on. Good girl. Do you know how to get in the car? I really don't want her first experience outside of the chicken coop to be in a kennel. I just feel like she deserves a little more than having to spend her first night just you know, locked up in a different place. I think it would just be really nice to get to know her, see what her ups and downs are gonna be, see how bad her anxiety might be, and, and really just give her a chance to kind of, you know, fit in somewhere and, get, and gain some weight. I've had a lot of really skinny fosters and I love to fatten them up, so.